Welcome to the Shuv Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. Tonight, I'm going to delve into a subject that you may find enlightening and hopefully healing. It's a topic that many people struggle with, growing up in a dysfunctional home and the resulting ramifications. Let's face it, because we live in a fallen world devastated by sin and rebellion against our Creator, we all have grown up in less than perfect conditions. We are all broken in one way or another. And broken people parent broken children. We may say, I'm not going to make the same mistakes that my parents did. Yeah, instead, we make different ones. All parents are flawed. All children are imperfect. Without intervention by God himself, we are without hope. Our innate defectiveness, due to our sinful nature, always interjects itself into our efforts. If you've been raised in a dysfunctional home, without healing, you'll be running through this life with a broken leg, wondering why you hurt and why you can't keep up with others. Personally, I wish I would have gotten help when I was in my teen years, before I made devastating choices out of a screwed-up head and heart. It wasn't until decades later that I began to find healing. In the meanwhile, I was a pretty miserable person to be around and made mistakes in parenting and personal relationships that could have been avoided. So if you are struggling, get help. Get help now. Now. Start your journey in letting God rebuild your shattered life. I know that victim mentality is popular today, but it is pure poison. We need to repent of our injured party mindset. You're an adult now and responsible for your choices. The first decision you need to make is to raise your hands up to God and cry out for healing. Remember, Yeshua asked that invalid by the pool in Jerusalem, Do you want to get well? Now, this man had been unable to walk for 38 years, and yet Yeshua still asks him, Do you want to get well? John 5, starting with verse 7. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Year after year, this man apparently dragged his body toward a slow towards the stirred healing waters. But the hare always won the race. He was feeling sorry for himself. I don't have anyone to help me. I'm not fast enough. 38 years. Then the master orders him, Get up, pick up your krabados, your bed, and walk. Immediately the man became well, picked up his bed, and began to walk. Now the Pharisees saw him carrying his bedroll, and they accused him of breaking the Shabbat. But since it was Messiah himself who had told the man to pick up his bed and walk, obviously the man was not guilty of breaking the written Torah regarding Sabbath by carrying his bedroll. Messiah was Torah observant, written Torah observant. He would never tell someone to break a written Torah command. The text goes on to say in verse 11, But he answered the Pharisees, He who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Pick it up and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Yeshua had slipped away while there was a crowd in that place. In the next verse, Messiah reveals the real reason why this man was an invalid for 38 years. Verse 14. Afterwards, Yeshua found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Ooh, so we see that sometimes sickness is a result of sin. At times, illness will be used to show the glory of God. On occasion, it will be employed to refine us. And now and then, sickness happens just because we live in a fallen world. But in this case, sin was the real reason why the man had not walked in 38 years. And Messiah Yeshua was point-blank truthful with him. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. How does the healed man respond to this? His true character rears its ugly head. Apparently, this man took offense at Yeshua pointing out his sin because the very next thing the man does is run to the Pharisees and reveal that it was Yeshua who had healed him and told him to pick up and carry his bed on the Shabbat. So Yeshua points out the man's sin 
and the man retaliated by betraying Messiah to those who wished to persecute, even kill him. It doesn't sound like gratitude to me. You can almost hear the man thinking, I'm not the one who sinned. The guy who healed me sinned. I'm thinking this man liked to blame swap rather than admit his own sins and repent. Remember, 38 long years this man was an invalid, and Messiah himself disclosed that it was because of sin. Yeshua graciously heals the man and warns him to stop sinning or something worse may happen. Because of love, Messiah is giving this miserable man a second chance to repent and change his ways. But unfortunately, from the text, it appears the man was still not able to take responsibility for his own sin. Very sad. What about us? Wallowing in a self-centered pool of pain, often of our own making, will we come to a point in our lives where we can face the truth, repent, and become responsible? Do you hear the Master say, do you want to get well? If your answer is a resounding, yes, Lord, then real change is now possible. If you're not, you will continue to tornado your vortex of emotional chaos and then wonder why you lose friends. People who reject their healing will blame everyone but themselves. You're an adult. You are responsible to take the wind out of that sail. Believe me, I have all ten fingers pointing back at myself. God is still mending the shattered places of my life. It's amazing how brokenness likes to hide in the shadows, leaving you scratching your head and saying, now, why did I react that way? For me, a lot of stuff from my childhood and beyond came piling up on me when I no longer had the fast-paced work a billion hours type of jobs. I now realize that my excessive work hours were a vain attempt to run from the buried pain. There was a well of sadness within me as deep as the sea, whose billows were only silenced in busyness. How many years of emotional and spiritual healthy life was missed due to not understanding just how messed up I truly was? Finally, the day came when I looked to heaven and said, Lord, what is wrong with me? I have such a heaviness in my heart, I cried, fist pounding my chest. I wanted to get well, desperately. Two days later, he sent the answer and also provided the tool to begin the healing. When you're ready, the Lord moves quickly. The answer to why the heaviness in my heart? I found out I'd been harboring unforgiveness, which had led to a burning vat of bitterness in my broken heart. My first steps to healing? Learning how to truly forgive for the first time in my life. Which brings me to this point. When you have been raised in a dysfunctional home, psychologists say that you have to reparent yourself. But how can you do that by yourself? You're broken too. I truly believe that you must let God reparent you. My father, who was an alcoholic, passed away years ago. Thankfully, he came to know the Lord two years before he died and became a changed man. That was so healing for him and the family. Not everyone is blessed by such an ending as that. Many parents cannot or will not face their culpability. Don't expect them to be part of your healing process. They're just too broken to help even themselves, let alone you. I know of a woman who, during the course of seeking her healing, attempted a discussion with her mother, addressing the hurtful things her mom had done to her in the past. Unfortunately, her mother suffers from covert narcissism and a hoarding mentality. The queen of denial was unable to connect with reality and instead rewounded her adult daughter. Recently, this woman learned her mom had lied about her to her sibling. When she confronted her mom about the lie, her mother protested with every blame-shifting effort in the book, then proceeded to slander her daughter to her other siblings in an attempt to make them her flying monkeys. It's a painful thing when you can't even rely on your own parents. It's hurtful when children have to parent their parent. All of this makes me revisit my own parenting skills, or lack thereof. I know I wasn't a perfect parent either, and I pray my children will forgive me. They certainly deserve better. But I'm here to tell you, and them, some really good news. There is hope. God will reparent you. He says it in his word. Check out Psalm 27, verses 10 through 11. Quote, When my father and my mother have forsaken me, then Hashem will asaf, 
gather me up. Teach me your way, Hashem, and lead me on an orach mishor, a level, upright, well-trodden path, because of my sharar, hostile enemies, end quote. In ancient times, unwanted babies were abandoned outside the city, left to die of exposure or animal attack. Childless couples or people looking for someone to raise as a slave would frequent these places looking for abandoned children. When David says, the Lord will, Asaf, gather me up, this is the picture he had in mind. God himself walks to that heart-rending hillside and will, Asaf, gather that discarded little one into his arms and become his or her parent. Our Heavenly Father has such a tender heart. He is the ultimate parent. He created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by Him. Growing up in a dysfunctional home, you can only guess at what, quote, normal is. Please don't look to what the world calls normal. Instead, we must rediscover God's normal. Quote, teach me your way, Hashem, end quote. God already has a culture, a mindset, a lifestyle, and it's good, and it's healthy. Remember, Messiah Yeshua told us in John 14, verse 27, Shalom, I leave you. My shalom, I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Don't let your hearts be troubled nor fearful. End quote. When I first started digging deep into my childhood to uncover the broken pieces and place them in his hands, I remember saying to him, But Lord, I don't know what normal is. Immediately, I mean immediately, he brought this verse to my mind. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, meaning, meaning penalty. End quote. Ah, I thought, that's it. That is God's normal. This is what family and community life should look like. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Then add to that what the Lord shares regarding what true love acts like. Because remember, love is an action. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. Love, agape, is patient, long-suffering. Love is kind, acts benevolently. Love is not jealous, it doesn't boil with envy. Love does not brag, it doesn't boast about oneself. It is not arrogant, puffed up and proud. It does not act disgracefully or dishonorably. It does not seek its own benefit, it's not self-centered. It is not easily provoked. It does not keep an account of a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, unjust deeds that violate God's law, but rejoices with the truth. It covers all things, meaning bears up, endures patiently. It believes all things. It has faith, fidelity, hopes all things, waits with joyful confidence in God, endures all things, perseveres under trials. Love never falls down, never fails. End quote. This is God's culture. This is God's normal. This is who he is. Want to know more about what God's household acts like? Read Leviticus 19 for starters. If you did not grow up with this, God's normal, your Heavenly Father wants to reparent you with these good and holy attributes. He is this towards you. And you are to extend this to others. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are commanded to honor our mother and our father. What if one or both your parents have been the abuser? To honor them does not mean to let them continue to hurt you. Rather, forgive them, taking them off your hook, because we are to forgive as we have been forgiven. They are now off your hook, but they're not off God's. Let him deal with them. To honor them, you can pray for them, for their healing and salvation. God's word tells us in Leviticus 19.18, You shall not take vengeance, nor hold any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Hashem. 
Retrain your mind by filling it with the truth of how God really acts, thinks, and feels towards you. Ask him to go into those places where the darkness hides. Cry on his shoulder and let him wipe away your tears. Allow him to refine you, scrape off the dross. His goal for you is that you would come forth as pure gold. It's going to take work. It's going to take asking the Lord to be painfully honest with you. Be pliable in his hands. Let him do his work transforming you. When you stumble and fall, and I said when, repent, get up, cling to him. Don't be stiff-necked, meaning to refuse to bow the head in repentance. And don't live in denial of your own sinfulness, like the man unable to walk for 38 years. He was stiff-necked. Proverbs 30.12 has something to say about that. Quote, There is a kind who is pure in his own eyes, yet is not washed from his filthiness. End quote. Personally, I've asked the Ruach HaKodesh to set a guard over my mind, my emotions, my mouth, my whole being. Lord, point out to me when I'm thinking erroneously or wallowing in unhealthy emotions or about to say the wrong thing. Help me when someone presses my trigger button that is not quite healed yet. Pull out those deep roots so that they can no longer oppress. He is faithful to do all of this for me and for you because of his love and faithfulness. This is my frequent prayer, all of Psalm 51, especially verse 10. Bara, create in me a clean heart, Elohim and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Only God can bara, create. We need to be recreated. Lay your broken life in his hands. Only God can take a shattered, defiled heart, mind, and spirit and create a beautiful, clean, white as snow person. It was very prophetic that at four years of age, the very first song I ever sang in public was Whiter Than Snow a song based on Psalm 51. And I have needed every word of it. Do you want to get well? Then do what he has commanded. Forgive because you have been forgiven. Don't wait 38 years. Be willing to shuv, to truly repent of breaking the terms of the covenant. Then go and sin no more. Understand that the ability to do all those things is also a free gift from the Lord to us, a gift that cost him everything, and yet he did it for the love of you and me. This has been The Shoe Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. Lila Tove. Good night.